Hey guys, I've seen a lot of ideas going around about what could be changed about this game, or if there even should be changes made to this game, and I thought it would be a fun idea to get my own ideas out there. So I've got five topics I'm going to try to cover in a sort of broad sense, and please keep in mind, nothing I say in this video is guaranteed to happen. These are just my own personal ideas, and they don't necessarily reflect the intentions of Project Brawl Busters as a whole. Alright, so let's get into it. First topic, event themes. So holidays and events is probably one of the things that most people agree would be a good change for the game. It's actually pretty bizarre that the original game didn't have this considering they had holidays like Halloween and Christmas where they had special gear. But yeah, I think this would be a really good addition to the game. Uh, stuff like this makes the game feel fresh all year round. So the obvious changes here would be menu colors and team colors, and then maybe even some slight map changes like making some of the maps night for Halloween by changing the sky textures and lighting would be really cool. And then I know that for St. Patrick's Day they had special hit effects that we could use as well. Alright, next we could talk about the shop a little bit. So I can't really speak for Zombie Rock, but I played the North American and European version of Brawl Busters, and in our version there's just a, a pretty sizable amount of gear missing that just wasn't accessible to us for whatever reason. I have no idea who goofed up on that one. Uh, probably Rock Hippo, but for whatever reason there's gear that we just couldn't access, but it's in the game files, so first of all make that accessible in the shop, because why not? It's just extra gear for everybody to use. And I should also specify I'm not even talking about like the manga gear or any of the soccer stuff, just regular weapons and clothing that wasn't available to us that we could throw in the shop. Like right here you can see the Tsar Pushka. Uh, fire Extinguisher and Black Pig. We didn't have any of these weapons in our version of Brawl Busters, and every class has weapons and clothing like this that just wasn't available. And it's actually pretty cool to finally see some of this gear, and a good amount of it showed up in the trailer for the game, which makes it extra bizarre that we never had it in our shop. One more thing about clothing I want to bring up. You may remember that early on in the game, there were randomized colors you could get on clothing you bought. And then at some point, mysteriously, they were like, okay, now everybody has dark gray. And then it was just like that forever. So bring back random colors, because they were cool. And they added an extra layer of customization. And then one more change for the shop that I think would be really good is to make slot changer easily available to everyone. So, in the original game, for whatever reason, Slot Changer cost RT. Uh, the only other way to get it was out of red boxes, if you were lucky. So this heavily discouraged players from using a basic feature of the game, which was really dumb. And in my opinion, 50 Slot Changers should just cost 50 BP, so it's really cheap and people buy them all the time. Alright, next we're going to talk about upgrades, which I realize is still kind of related to the shop, but I feel like it's also sort of its own thing. So, fuses. First of all, fuses. So, in our version of Brawl Busters, plus one fuses were the only things available in the shop and in boxes, so the only way to get plus two or plus three fuses was either in rare events or by making new accounts, because there, if I remember correctly, there was a way to get a limited number of plus two and plus three fuses from either missions or leveling up early on. So, a super easy change, make plus two and plus three fuses available in the shop, but they're more expensive. As for plus four and plus five fuses, um, I'm not sure if these should be available in the shop or if they should still be from capsule machines. Or an even better option would be to have plus four and plus five fuses in boxes and as mission rewards so that people can actually get good things from those instead of just garbage. There's a lot of other rewards we could have in boxes and for missions, but fuses would definitely be a really good one since they're probably the most important upgrade. I know that at the end of the game, crit damage was definitely the most important thing you could have. Alright, let's also go into weapon upgrades a little bit. So in Brawl Busters, max gear level was plus 8, uh, technically plus 9, but that didn't really count. So the question is, what should be the max gear level? In my opinion, it would probably be good to at least start out at a max gear level of plus 8, and then possibly go from there if the game does have updates, then maybe roll out higher gear levels later on, potentially. But plus 8 seems like a good place to start, and in addition to that, I think that all gear should be able to reach plus 8, because one of the problems with having only Christmas gear and Wukong be plus 8 is that that highly incentivizes players to wear gear 
that they might not necessarily like that much, but they're wearing it for the stats. And it's probably better if people can have both their cosmetic preference as well as high level gear. And there's a really simple way we could go about doing that. We just use Weapon++ plus plus and Costume++. Plus plus. In Brawl Busters, we had Weapon++ plus and Costume++, plus, which allowed maximum level of plus 7. But similar to plus 4 and plus 5 fuses, Weapon++ plus plus and Costume++ plus plus would be a really good box and mission reward. And the way it works by default is Weapon++ plus plus allows you to upgrade all the way to plus 10, and it also increases the chances of upgrading. So in this case, we could just adjust it so that Weapon++ plus plus and Costume++ plus plus allows for upgrading to plus 8, and that way any piece of gear can be leveled up to plus 8, which would be probably ideal in my opinion. And now for probably the most controversial aspect of game changes, balance. But before we get into this, I think it's important to keep in mind that this game changed a lot over its lifetime. Let's look at some highlights. Remember when this was a thing? and there was just literally nothing you could do about it? Remember when people could camp on the roofs of City Hall Station and the zombies could just not get you at all? Even in infection mode? Remember when Skyglobe did the Thanos snap and half the player base disappeared after they broke hit stun? Remember when they finally added 1v1 but it came with items and a super busted revenge buff? Watch this. That just did 40%, 20%, 20%. Everything was a crit. It's cheap as hell. Remember when Triple Spike was introduced and it sucked? Except you could get kiosks in literally two throws? This weapon just pisses me off because you can get the kiosk so fast. And that last one's still in the game. <gasps> Alright, so that may have seemed a little bit harsh, but I just wanted to remind you guys that this game was never perfect, and even in the last patch, there were still issues with it. I can kind of understand some people's perspective of not wanting to change anything, but it just seems like a huge missed opportunity when we could have a much better version of the game available to us. And while I could probably spend a lot of time talking about patches and balance changes, uh, I'll just cover a few really quick. So first of all, obviously, Manometer and triple spike in general, probably should not get items that quickly. Because team fights can often just devolve into which team has a triple spike, or which triple spike player can throw their triple spike better. Now obviously there's also the question of how would we balance classes in general, beyond just, you know, fixes like that. And this is where things get a bit more complicated. Because if I were to go back in time to 2012-2013, most top players would probably say a tier list for Brawl Busters would look something like this. Kind of makes sense, right? I mean, Blitzer, Firefighter, Rocker, they were considered good. Boxer was considered pretty bad and competitive towards the end. Maybe it was okay in 1v1 though, but team fights probably not so much. And Slugger was typically just considered pretty bad all around. But there's more to the classes than this, because every class has a variety of weapon combinations you can use. So an actual tier list would probably look something more like this. By the way, if anyone's interested in making their own tier lists for fun, I'll have a link to this in the description. Now I'm not claiming to be an expert, I definitely wasn't one of the top players during the game's lifetime. But most people could probably agree what the top three are, and also what some of the worst ones are. But obviously I'm not going to go too deep into all of these, but I will bring up a few really quick that could probably be changed in fairly simple ways to improve them considerably. First of all, Flamethrower. A big problem with Flamethrower that could be very easily remedied, uh, as far as I can tell, is that you can't act while using the flame, whereas most classes you can roll or stop shooting, uh, with the Flamethrower you can't. Rapid Fire also had this problem, and it's really bad especially when most other weapons, or abilities anyway, can be acted out of. And pretty much they're both bad because it involves being very committal anytime you want to attack someone. And then Slugger. I know that Slugger got Tin Stovepipe, and that single-handedly brought it up like from hot garbage to at least decent, but I think people should be able to use other Slugger weapons as well without being totally useless. 
So a pretty reasonable change for that would be to increase the shot speed and the homing distance of most slugger attacks that involve homing shots. Alright, so I could talk about balance forever, but this video is already way too long, and I wanted to just kind of briefly cover some of these subjects. So let's move on to maps. So for this, I'll just talk a little bit about 1v1 mostly. So I already briefly mentioned before that 1v1 has some flaws. Players can use items, which means if people didn't want to use items, they had to do a sort of gentleman's agreement before the match, or one player would just end up using items and then it was a item fest. Which isn't necessarily bad, but it seemed like the competitive players mostly preferred playing without items. Another issue is there was the revenge buff, which I think did get nerfed at some point. It may have still existed in some capacity, so getting rid of that would probably be good. And then possibly extending the time limit. I, I vaguely remember a lot of matches going to time for some reason. So yeah, extend the time limit, get rid of the revenge buff, and then get rid of anything that can give you items, and remove bombs as well, because those were always something that people just had to get rid of before they started fighting. Now as for new map ideas, a really easy one to implement would be just the boss arena. Um, I remember before Midnight Arena was even released, people used Triple Adventure's uh, middle area as a place to do 1v1s. Which wasn't super ideal at the time, because there were items and bombs everywhere, and you could accidentally get sent down one of the paths or go up one of the fire hydrants. But the boss arena version's perfect, because the paths are blocked off, and if we just remove the kiosk and the things that you can obtain items from, it'd be a really good 1v1 area. And that's pretty much everything I've got for this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I might do more of these where I go in-depth on each of the categories, but I thought for this one it would be best to just kind of introduce some of the ideas I have. And again, these are just my ideas. These aren't necessarily things that'll even happen. Oh! Oh my God! Thanks for watching, I'll see you guys next time.